Alrighty, wise gamers, it's your wise gamer, kill all the wise. Welcome to the Fortress of Bad Gaming Decisions. As always, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and share. Uh, today's video will be going over my Steam Fest top five games. Here's the criteria for each game that I'll be looking at. The games that I played anyway, that I will rate from one to five on like one being the one I'm going to buy immediately and five being the one I'm not going to buy later. And then some honorable mentions after. So we have mechanics. So we're going to be rating the game off mechanics, gameplay. Is there a multiplayer, not multiplayer, story, and the replay value in my eyes? So as you guys know from my channel, I play a bunch of roguelite, rogue souls-like games. So we're going to adjust it off of my gaming knowledge. Let's get into it, wise gamers. Alrighty, so we have Windblown, right? So this is a rogue light game where you play as a creature you have to go into a tornado uh, there's a bit of a story you try to get the memories robots um it's made by motion twin which is the famous studio that made dead cells then we have so the mechanics are you have unlimited dashes and then you get to combo your weapons so like you get to as long as you finish the combo a little thing pops up over your head and you're able to then do the combo like that um obviously it's a top semi top down approach there are some limited dashes uh it's the reason i like it and i feel like it's it's such a polished and smooth game it does come out in about four days from when this video drops so that's something to look out for but it is a lot very polished which i expect nothing less coming from motion twin uh they're a great indie developer studio and they're great roguelite studio they make great roguelites you know what i'm saying between um this game their other one curse of gods there's just so many they made then i think the replay value is really good because you you have to like the demo only lets you get four weapons but there is more weapons there's you can every time you beat a boss you get to the end you get stuff to collect that unlocks more things you can talk to all these npcs to unlock more memory which unlock different weapons and items to use in the game so i believe the replay value in this game is a lot and then obviously you can try speed running things they haven't added that into this but i know we're dealing with dashes it's not very far behind where they're gonna there's gonna be speed running of this where you can try to get through it as fast as possible so that is the game, Windblown, and that's why it's my number one because it's the most polished. And I look forward to playing it. Alrighty, our next game um is Wild Woods. This game is number two on the list because it's like overcooked and a roguelike game where you have to manage your resources and kill the enemies while protecting the cart. It has a great replay value. I think me and my friend played this demo for almost an hour and a half because we were having so much fun. Uh, this doesn't have a release date, so I don't know when it's actually coming out, but it definitely was a secret find and something to really look forward to. I'll be doing a full video, actually, of my whole gameplay with me and my friend. So be ready to watch that. But this game's mechanics are really simple. You just slash you have two you have a heavy attack a uh, basic attack and then you have to pick up the objects and dump them in your cart and that's how you heal and that's how you do the firewood and then you pick which way you want to go yeah see we had no idea what we were even doing but this game was super enjoyable and then you could pick whichever way you want to go safe camp takes you to a camp where you buy stuff an ambush and heavy hitters makes these makes it so your enemy is on this right indicator on the right side of the screen actually make it harder to play the game but you get more rewards so if you have up to 10 coins you cash out so see we're just we're talking but this is also a couch co-op game and an online game so this is a great game to play with your daughter which i think my daughter would love to play this game so i might actually end up that i will be getting this game just so me, me and her can play it and me and my friend can play it but i don't know when this game will actually even drop so to stay aware of that wise gamers now we're going into our number three because this was number two of my two favorite of my games that i'm gonna buy immediately when it drops off of this from steam next fest 
Let's go into the next one. The third game is Temtem, which is another. This one's more vampire survivor than it is anything. Uh, this is one of those ones where the combat plays itself and you kind of just run around and kill enemies. Um, this one's cool because the mechanics a little different than normal ones. Uh, besides giving quests, which it does like kill so many, do so much damage and do this and do that. Um, these actually have on mission quests that, that you can go do such as uh going to get like going like see a little indicator on the screen pop up that's telling me where to go um that way i can unlock more resources you got treasure chests it's like little mini quests inside the thing and i think that was pretty cool i haven't really come across that in a vamp in a vampire survivors over the top like wave defense type game in a while so i did find this enjoyable me and my friend also played this game which gets me to the next point that it is multiplayer. I mean, my friend did play this game for a very long time. At least three, two, two or three days we played it. At least I want to say three or four hours of the game we played. Um, and then you unlock. So essentially it's Tem, it's Pokemon. It's Temtem, which is like the competitor for Pokemon apparently, but not really. But you play as those Temtem and you can evolve them. Like there's a Platy. And that evolved into three, and then you just pretty much just play the game, level up, beat the boards, finish the quests, unlock different things, and then level up and try to go as far as you can. I like this concept because I like Pokemon, and I like the evolution thing. Just trying to figure out what levels things evolve at is really fun, and that's what made me want to play for the first time with the wave defense. I was like, oh, cool, Temtem, Swarms. And it's a really polished game overall. The, the gameplay is simple enough. Anyone can pick it up and play it but in-depth enough where there's strategy and mid-maxing of it, which is what I like. So we'll get into that. That's why it's number three on our list. Then we're going to get into the last two and then the honorable mentions. Let's get into it, gamer. The next one is Voin. Uh, this is a true Souls-like first-person game. I love it. And this is one. Um, this is why it's number four because I don't love it as much as the other games. The other games have multiplayer. I'm able to play them with family and friends, which is what I like to do as a gamer. Since I'm a dad gamer, this game I enjoy because it's a uh, reminds me of Doom, but first person. I have a sword, and the combat's simple enough, but in depth enough with the dashing and the comboing that it makes it a valuable game. And that's the mechanic. So you have a kick, you have your spells on the right hand side, which you hold LT, you have three charges for dashes. Then when you take your sword away, you have like a super dash that's for movement ability. Um, that's the kind of the gameplay mechanic. You have two weapons, you have to go back to base in order to, um, so you collect these items from these enemies. They're usually um, corrupted, so you have to uncorrupt them. You have to go back to the town, spend money and gold to uncorrupt them. In the demo, there's NPCs and stuff, but this was definitely one of the other hidden ones I liked that I found. The game itself, the combat is just real smooth. You can play in retro or modern, uh, but it is a true Souls like. So when you die, you lose all your stuff, and if you die again, you don't get to pick that stuff up again. So just be aware of that. Um, I was not truly aware of that, but I mean, to be able to play to be able to play this roguelike game. Watch me do an ability. Ooh. And things are just so satisfying. You heal. Um, I like how the healing is. There's no items to heal you. You have to actually fight to heal. So every auto attack you'll see on the left hand side, my health will go up. And that's how you actually heal. So it actually makes, it forces you to, it forces you to fight in order to heal instead of running. And then learning how to dodge the yellow abilities. If you do a perfect dodge, you do become invulnerable. So it makes it it makes it better to play. And I think this game is a real enjoyable game. And then we have to get into our last one that I truly think I'll buy. And then we'll get into our honorable mentions. Last of my list of the five games I'm gonna buy when they buy or most likely most likely will buy and play is AI Limit. Uh, this is a anime s code vein. I did love code vein. I do have a video of it on my channel I never finished it, but I did like it um, It was enjoyable, but it's another souls like game. This is a souls like Not true souls like where if I die I drop 
No, this is a true souls like, but when you die, you drop your your stuff. You drop your little, you sell little crystals on the bottom. Eight ninety seven. You drop those when you die. Um, and you have to level up your character using those, like in elders, 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 like in elder Elden Ring. There we go. That was so hard. English is hard for me today. Uh, there's obviously your heal. You have blocking spells. You have a freaking shoulder. You have a hand cannon. Uh, the combat is pretty smooth. The dodging is pretty good. I mean, it could be a little bit better, but for what the type of game it is, um, learning how to, learning all the enemies' dodge mechanics and stuff, and their attack frames is probably this is the game for you. Um, I liked it for the most part. Also, remembering where all the enemies spawn is another key indicator. Like, look at my, look at my freaking railgun cannon. Pew, pew. And then I get attacked from behind. I'm like, oh no. Let me get out of this situation. You get two weapons. I'm using a giant sword. I don't have my other weapon up yet. You can auto lock on people, which is in the end doing me dirty. And then I'm gonna kill to kill that guy. The combat's pretty simple. It's just your basic three autos and then a heavy attack. And then you have your abilities. Then you have your shield, stuff like that. Um, it is a little unforgiving. So just be aware of that. But I did find have a ton of time playing it. I have a full video of me. My first, my first live reaction playing it, and I'll be uploading later in the week. So as always, let's get into honorable mention, shall we? All right, first honorable mention is Spigenheim. It's a Hades-like game. Um, I would have liked it more if I was better at keyboard. As you can tell, as you can tell, I'm not the greatest with keyboard. Um, <laughs> I'm not a keyboard warrior. So it actually um, was rather hard for me to play this game. Uh, I actually had to mute the video because I do talk a lot because I will be releasing this small clip later on. Um, but the games was pretty fun. Um, you do get like an auto, you get a, a, a dash, you get an ultimate, and then you get um like a auto like a like a like a projectile kind of like hades and then you get to level up your stuff i thought it was funny because it's like zap zap and it's a chunk cutter um replay value on this one's pretty high but i i played the demo up until chapter two i think i beat the demo yeah i beat the demo so i beat it so that just says a lot about it um and it wasn't the easiest demo i did play it for about an hour and a half to get that far so it is a Difficulty hot difficult game, but most likely because I was on keyboard and couldn't play on controller Even though it says controller likely I couldn't play on controller. So I was like, all right, whatever I'm gonna play on the keyboard um, But that's why it's honorable mention if I had keyboard I definitely put it in my top five Maybe I'll even make it a top six, but that's why it's honorable mention. Let's get into our next one uh, Number two on honorable mention is Avalon crew This is a Among Us type game where you play with your friends trying to power up the spaceship and save the spaceship i also had to mute the audio for this one because me and my friend were playing it and it's going to be a video i'm going to release later on of our antics of trying to play it so <laughs> it was rather enjoyable of a game um a little buggy which is why it's an honorable mention if it works on the bugs before it release it releases itself before its release date and it works on some of the bugs that happened, like phasing through the wall, um, unable to pick up the items. I think it's a really good game with four friends. Uh, you have to work together and kind of get through things, but it's not. And it's also some antics can be ensued. So that's why it's honorable mention number two. I did really like it. It just wasn't. It's just not something I can recommend to get immediately until those bugs get fixed. Um, The next honorable mention is the axis unseen this is definitely on my list of things to get i just don't know when i'm gonna get it that's why i put an honorable mention i can see myself playing a game like this um i just don't know when i'll get it maybe once on sale i might get it immediately who knows i did really enjoy it being a hunter and trying to hunt bigfoot was rather enjoyable and i think it's something that i can see myself playing a lot of hours into um there's only so many hours in a day for someone like me who's a, who's a full-time job and gaming but this game definitely is up there for honorable mentions. I did enjoy it. It's number three on the list. Yeah, number 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 three on the list because it is 
enjoyable. I did find the combat to be smooth and the replay value really high. Now let's get into our last or two last last two honorable mentions. Alrighty, number four on honorable mentions list is uh Morgan Stern. This is like a dungeon born but third person wave like game where you gotta destroy these giant statues. They give different rewards, their characters have different abilities. Uh, it's, there's there's PvE, PvP, and there's PvP, PvE, but pretty much this is the demo. You're able to just fight the waves, level up your character. Um, as you level up your character, you unlock. So as you play the game, you unlock weapons that when you teleport back to base, you can get more. You can then unlock those weapons and then make your loadout. Uh, they don't, you don't lose it like when you die, but I'm playing as a samurai. Um... I have a video of me playing as the necromancer making it pretty far um, but I think the game is honorable mentions because one it's multiplayer but I don't see myself buying it to play it um, I did think it's a really fun game and polish and if I had friends play with me I probably have more fun but as of right now where it stands my friends aren't interested in this kind of game so I would say I'm not interested in it either at the moment but it is honorable mention because it was a good game I did find on Steam Next Fest. Number five on honorable mentions is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Splintered Past. Um, this roguelike is fun, but I just feel like the difficulty level wasn't as high as I wanted. I think I beat the whole demo on the first run through, didn't die once. Um, that says a lot, because I play a lot of roguelike, roguelike games like this from over the top. And I definitely thought that this would be a little bit harder, but. It wasn't. That's why I make it an honorable mention. Because I don't think the replay value for me is as good. But if you like seeing me in the turtles and you're you like the, the, the story is phenomenal, the voice acting is phenomenal. It's definitely a top grade game. It is a little clunky in my opinion, and combat could be a little smoother. But that's just me. If I had to nitpick it, that's just me nitpicking it. That's why it's honorable mentions. That and the difficulty level make it honorable mentions for me. Otherwise, I probably would have it up there in my top list but based on the other games we've seen in the list like Windblown and Wild Woods and Temtem I just feel like it's not up to the par for me on that so let's get into our wrap up alrighty wise gamers so that is my games that I found on Steam Next Fest so but the top two are definitely Windblown and Wild Woods and then Temtem is up there with three and then my other two games of AI Limiter and Voin are definitely going to be bought at some time. The honorable mentions, I could flip those around and put them in any real order, but that's pretty much the order I stand right now. Um, the Avalon Crew is definitely up there as being a good game, but those bugs just make it bad. If you like the content, you want me to do more videos like this, uh, just hit that comment, like subscribe, leave a comment below, hit the subscribe button, and share my video. Thanks for stopping by the Fortress of Bad Gaming Decisions, watch gamers, and I'll see you guys next time in the Fortress of Bad Gaming Decisions.